it's summertime and if you're looking for your first outdoors job in either science or conservation or whatever you're doing as a student or somebody that just graduated well then guess what this is the right video for you in this video i'm going to talk about how to approach stuff like resumes and your actual interview when you're talking to an employer but i'm not actually going to go over my resume or anything like that when it comes to this video we're just kind of going to go over the mentality that you need to approach these jobs with which is where I think most people are kind of falling flat when they're trying to get into these jobs. The first thing that I think helps when trying to get one of these seasonal jobs in the summer is asking the most important question, which is why on earth is this agency even looking for summer seasonals? Well, usually when you look at an agency, whether it's a government agency or a consulting agency or something, these agencies can run on a skeleton crew of specialists just about year round unless they have a big project going on and in a lot of cases in the summer there's just tedious work that piles up and the specialists just kind of can't get to and this is where you come in as a summer seasonal they're looking for somebody that they can give the minimal amount of training to do these specific jobs generally they just can't or don't want to do on their own break down simply what employers are looking for versus aren't looking for they are looking for somebody that is capable of problem solving and approaching a situation that they might, might run into the field with some sort of background that would allow them to do the job better. Now, when you're writing your resume and you're starting to look over your interview notes and kind of what you want to present yourself as when you're looking at your interview, what are the things that you actually want to go out there and present to the employers? Unless you're in some sort of like city position or something that I'm not too familiar with, a really big one is just going to be showing that you could work in adverse weather and you're okay with being outdoors for long periods of time. I was lucky and I worked a lot of outdoors jobs like camp counselor and a whole bunch of random other things over the years. So I really was able to put that together and be like, hey, I'm a person that generally knows how to be outside and bad weather is not gonna deter me. I don't care if it's too hot, I can plan around that. This one seems obvious, but you're gonna be super surprised when you actually get into one of these jobs, how many people over the years say that they love the outdoors go outside and just suck at it. And that makes the whole season awful. A big one for a lot of agencies is that you are capable of driving off roads and that you have hopefully some experience towing depending on where you're going. Towing depending on where you're going. I didn't realize when I was writing this, but not only does that rhyme, but there might be some deeper meaning there. They just want to know that you're going to be comfortable if you're in a truck that has something like 4x4 four four on it. And with towing, it's that you're not going to jackknife your vehicle a bunch, which I'm going to be honest, I might have oversold because I thought I was decent at towing because I did construction and stuff in the past. But man, oh man, on public lands, I definitely have jackknife vehicles. It's a... Uh, it's very different. And of course, you're gonna to wanna to show that you're generally able to do the types of tasks that the job's gonna want you to do. Now, that's not gonna mean that you have to prove that you have the exact sampling method that they're gonna use at this job and you are super knowledgeable about it. Honestly, from the jobs that I've applied to, the biggest thing is that, hey, you're just generally somebody that understands sampling, you understand the kind of tools you're gonna to be using, you know, if it's GPS or probes and stuff like that, like having a general understanding of how to use those two tools, maybe maintenance and troubleshoot them and go out into the field with them. So they can generally just trust you as a person with the tools they're handing you. And don't focus on trying to prove or find a super niche thing where you're like, I know exactly what you guys do. Because honestly, in most jobs out there in the field, nobody other than the people that have done it before know exactly how they do it. And now probably the biggest thing that we can go over is how not to present yourself in your resume and in your interview. And I'm gonna be honest, this is where I lost probably most of the jobs I applied to for like three years when I was first trying to get into the workforce. What you're not gonna to wanna to do, as I previously had mentioned, is try to prove super heavily that you are some sort of super expert at whatever field you're about to be working in. Let's be honest here, you're watching a video about how to get your first summer seasonal job ever and 
if that's who you are approaching an interview, the interviewers are gonna feel that. Not at all to deter people from continuing watching this though. Even if you have some sort of knowledge, you read about stuff, ultimately the most you can do is show enthusiasm with those tools. What's really gonna happen is if you do what I did and tried to show how smart you are, you're gonna be talking to somebody that has absolute knowledge about what they do on a day-to-day -day basis and you're gonna have your perspective and if those things do not line up, which they probably won't very well, it's just gonna be awkward. I'm gonna be honest, if I was to reflect on a lot of my interviews when I was younger, I probably came off as a know-it-all and generally people just don't wanna work with a person like that. I really tried to focus on how smart I was. I was like, oh man, I did this kind of like scientific work that was uh, on this publication or some sort of thing like that, right? Really, maybe some supervisors are gonna hear that and be like, wow, that's cool, this guy's very interested in this or gal or whatever and they're gonna love that you kind of put the attention into that, right? What's most likely gonna happen with a lot of supervisors, imagine somebody that's working a nine to five, it just happens to be science, and they're just kind of tired of work at this point. They have family and other stuff. Kind of one of the last things that they're gonna want is somebody approaching them with this huge energy about how they know everything. No, what they really want is somebody that can take the workload that they have and make their life kind of easier at work for that season, right? So I'm not an expert or anything. I'm just your average low level science worker out here, but hopefully these are some tips that kind of help you smooth through interviews. I will be honest, I did over 100 interviews within like five years to really hash out what is not annoying and well representing of myself. And these are just some general tools that I hope help you guys out when approaching future resumes and job applications. This is College Story Mode. I'm kind of sort of back and you have a good day.